Rod Gilbert. Hello, Hello Long Variety, London Palladium. Hello. Hello. I'm Rod Gilbert. It's very nice to be here. Hello, I'm from Wales. It's not all glamour, you know. <laughs> Growing up in Wales is tough. Do you have any Welsh people here? Yeah. Yes! How old were you when you realised you could take a cagoule off? <laughs> it's true, I remember one night I dreamt it stopped raining. <laughs> I never forget that first dry dream, do you, my little friend? <laughs> Ladies and we have the Prince of Wales here tonight. Hello! <laughs> hello, hello! Uh, we, we are neighbours! No, it's true, because you've bought up a little place down in near Carmarthen. In Carmarthen, Wernod, it's called. That's where I live. Are you, are you down on the, the big council estate down there? The... <laughs> no, is it? You're one foot with the big the caravan on the end. That's, that's you with a flashy satellite dish. <laughs> yeah, Astra, Vauxhall Astra, p Reds, that's you. It's true, that's... It's true, it's a nice estate, isn't it? There's a lot of vandalism, though, at the moment. It's, uh, they've done the bus shelter again. Have you seen that? Graffitied the bus shelter the third time this month they've done it. Hey, I'm not saying it is your two boys, definitely, right? But... No! People talk. People talk. People talk and there's no smoke without fire. Do you know where they were? Last... Do you know where they were last Saturday for sure? <laughs> Loina Wernod, that's where we live, that's a wonderful... Does anybody speak Welsh? Do you? How did you... I've been trying to learn for two years, because it... No, it's a beautiful, it's the most poetic, beautiful, but it's the most difficult language, and I've broken my arm twice. That's a, I started a course two years ago, 30 people started that course, one bloke passed. One passed, three failed, and 26 dead. <laughs> 26 people died trying to learn Welsh. I kid you. There's one bloke choked and swallowed his tongue, the poor son. There's <laughs> another guy had a nervous breakdown, ran to the front and killed himself in front of everyone. He wasn't even supposed to be doing Welsh, bless him. <laughs> this is week six. We found out later he was supposed to be doing assertiveness in the room next door. <laughs> we didn't even know who he was. We didn't hear the peep out of him for six weeks. He's as quiet as a he wrote a suicide note in Welsh, bless him. He said he was on the wrong course and Welsh was too hard and the teacher was a fascist. And ironically, he got a B for that. He did quite well, bless him. <laughs> Welsh is difficult. Do you know part of the... You speak Welsh. Part of the problem is with Welsh is that words change. You just learn a word, don't you? It's called mutations. If you come across these, then start the in mutation. Because in English, words don't change, do they? Once you've got the hang of a word, that's pretty much it for life, as far as I know. In it. Like, what's the English for cat? <laughs> what is it? Cat. cat, is it? See, once you know that, once you know that, you're fine, aren't you? Doesn't matter when it's up a tree on your lap in front of the fire, cat is always pretty much cat. Not in Welsh, words change, they mutate, depends on the context, on the sentence. And, like, if you go to Newport, for example, if you go into Newport, if you see it in Welsh on the signs, it's car snewydd, isn't it? C-A-S, but then you are laughing because it, sometimes it's gar snewydd. The C changes to a G, doesn't it? Sometimes the C changes to N-G-H, so it's ah snewydd, isn't it? <laughs> it's true, they tried to teach us that on this course. Right after three days, there was a stalemate in the classroom. The teachers are on one side behind the piano and we were, we were dug in behind the audio-visual equipment. <laughs> Three days we held them off, we held our ground. And day four we all came out and had a game of table football in no man's land. <laughs> and day five they rushed us, they came over the top of the piano screaming and shouting and waving their grammar books. We didn't stand a chance. There was bodies everywhere. Couldn't see for chalk dust, there was bits of dictionary floating down. I lost my best mate that day. <laughs> so Michael Tom learned Welsh, bless him. He died in my arms. <laughs> trying to learn these mutations, you know. He said, will you, his last words, he said, will you give a message to my wife, Rod? I said, of course I will, anything. He said, will you tell Maura I, I, I'm mother? 
He said, surely you mean tell four, uh, I have. Uh, he said, doesn't L go to M? I said, not if it's a present tense, it's a transitive verb. The second to the last sentence is the same as the next one. He said, look this for a fuck and die. Did I <laughs> You're in the Royal Navy as well, I understand. The big cheese. Big cheese, because I always wanted to join the Navy when I was growing up in Wales. I, I just wanted to go somewhere drier, to be honest. <laughs> so that start with the sea. But then those adverts, don't they, those adverts put you off, you know the ones I mean? The police do them, the Navy, the, everybody's doing those very challenging, confrontational adverts, aren't they? Be the best. Could you do this? Could you do that? Put yourself in this awful situation. I'm not sure if they want you to join or not. You know, I remember the one that put me off. It was very challenging. I think they were looking for a chef. Do you remember this one, Your Royal Highness? It started off very... It said, can you... Can you fry an egg? Do you remember that on the right? I remember the first time I ever heard that advert and I thought, no. No, I can't. Maybe the Navy's not for me. <laughs> and then he said, could you fry an egg on a boat? I thought, no. <laughs> then he said, could you fry an egg on a boat in a storm? I thought, no. <laughs> I thought, to be honest, you're not making this any easier. <laughs> if anything, it's getting more difficult to fry this egg of yours. <laughs> Maybe you're talking to the wrong person altogether. Maybe you're looking for somebody who said yes to the first question. I don't know. <laughs> but it went mad. Do you remember it said, could you fry 200 eggs for 200 hungry sailors on a boat in a storm on the high sea while you're being bombed by the enemy? I thought, no! I still can't fry an egg, mate. I still can't do it! <laughs> then it hit me. I had a thought occurred to me. I thought I could probably do scrambled eggs. <laughs> Do you mind if I brought out scrambled eggs instead of fried eggs? And I said, it's only a small change to the menu, isn't it? There's a, there's a battle going on out there. Come to think of it, maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about dinner at all. Maybe a few of us should try and fend off the enemy first. If there's any survivors, we can get a takeaway later if it's that important. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a delight to come to the Palladium and play to you. I'm Rod Gilbert, thank you very, very much.